Tuberculosis. Tuberculosis, which is caused by bacteria of the Mycobacterium tuberculosis complex, is one of the oldest diseases known to affect humans and the top cause of infectious death worldwide. The Mycobacterium tuberculosis complex is a genetically related group of Mycobacterium species that can cause tuberculosis in humans or other animals. Of the pathogenic species belonging to the Mycobacterium tuberculosis complex, which comprises eight distinct subgroups, the most common and important agent of human disease by far is Mycobacterium tuberculosis. A closely related organism, isolated from cases in West, Central, and East Africa, is Mycobacterium africanum. The complex includes some zoonotic members, such as Mycobacterium bovis, once an important cause of tuberculosis transmitted by unpasteurized milk, and currently responsible for 150,000 human cases worldwide. In addition, other organisms that have been reported rarely as causing tuberculosis include Mycobacterium pinnipedii, Mycobacterium mungi, Mycobacterium origis, Mycobacterium microti, and finally, Mycobacterium canetti. Microbacterium tuberculosis is most commonly transmitted from a person with infectious pulmonary tuberculosis by droplet nuclei, which are aerosolized by coughing, sneezing, or speaking. The tiny droplets dry rapidly, the smallest may remain suspended in the air for several hours, and may reach the terminal air passages when inhaled. Although the majority of inhaled bacilli are trapped in the upper airways and expelled by ciliated mucosal cells, a fraction reach the alveoli, a unique immunoregulatory environment. There, alveolar macrophages that have not yet been activated phagocytose the bacilli. Adhesion of mycobacteria to macrophages results largely from binding of the bacterial cell wall to a variety of macrophage cell surface molecules. Macrophages package them into a space called phagosome. With most cases, the macrophage then fuses the phagosome with a lysosome, which has hydrolytic enzymes that can pretty much break down any biochemical molecule. Tuberculosis is tricky though, and once inside the macrophage, they produce a protein that inhibits this fusion, which allows the mycobacterium to survive. If the bacilli are successful in arresting phagosome maturation, then replication begins, and the macrophage eventually ruptures and releases its bacillary contents. Other uninfected phagocytic cells are then recruited to continue the infection cycle by ingesting dying macrophages and their bacillary content thus, in turn, becoming infected themselves and expanding the infection. At this point, somebody has developed primary tuberculosis. Most people at this stage are actually asymptomatic or maybe have a mild flu-like illness. Bacilli multiplying in macrophages cause a chemotactic response that brings additional macrophages and other defensive cells to the area. These form a surrounding layer and, in turn, an early tubercle. Ultimately, the chemoattractants and bacterial products are released during the repeated rounds of cell lysis and infection of newly arriving macrophages enable dendritic cells to access bacilli. These cells migrate to the draining lymph nodes and present mycobacterial antigens to T lymphocytes. At this point, the development of cell-mediated and humoral immunity begins. About two to four weeks after infection, two host responses to Mycobacterium tuberculosis develop, a macrophage activating cellular mediated immunity response and a tissue damaging response. The macrophage activating response is a T cell mediated phenomenon resulting in the activation of macrophages that are capable of killing and digesting tubercle bacilli. In addition to stimulating macrophages to kill mycobacteria, the T-cell response orchestrates the formation of granulomas and caseous necrosis. Activated macrophages differentiate into the epithelioid histiocytes that aggregate to form granulomas. 
In many people, this response halts the infection before significant tissue destruction or illness occur. In other people, the infection progresses due to advanced age or immunosuppression, and the ongoing immune response results in a caseation necrosis, which means cheese-like necrosis, since the dead tissue is soft, white, and looks a bit like cheese. This area is known as a gone focus. Tubercle bacilli, either free or within phagocytes, drain to the regional nodes and causes caseation there as well. This combination of parenchymal lung lesion and nodal involvement is referred to as the GON complex. At this point, some lesions may heal by fibrosis with subsequent calcification and produce a scar tissue that can be seen on X-ray. This calcification GON complex is called a rank complex. In some cases, the immune system may have destroyed mycobacteria, although a scar is left over. In other cases, even though they were walled off, they remain viable and are therefore still alive, but they're just dormant. And when the host immunity is weakened, secondary tuberculosis occur. Secondary tuberculosis classically involves the apex of upper lobes of one or both lungs where the substantially higher mean oxygen tension forces mycobacterial growth. Since they were previously exposed, the immune system's memory T cells quickly release cytokines to try and control the new outbreak, which forms more areas of caseous necrosis. This time, though, it tends to cavitate or form cavities. Erosion of the cavities into an airway is an important source of infection because the person now coughs sputum that contains bacteria. Systemic miliary tuberculosis occurs when bacteria disseminate through the systemic arterial system. Organs that are commonly involved include the meninges causing meningitis, the kidneys resulting in sterile pyuria, the adrenals causing Addison's disease, and the bones causing osteomyelitis. Do not forget to like the video and subscribe to our YouTube channel.